What's up? What's up? This is Entertainment Attorney Stephanie Hay. And today, I guess I'm dropping in because I have gotten um, tagged in the post. I've been sent the post. The whole Meg Thee Stallion comment um, and situation that she posted, I guess, yesterday online as it relates to her recording agreement with her label and um, Rock Nation. So, I want to come in and comment. I've been saying for a while that I was going to do like an in the news segment where we can kind of talk about things like this and, you know, what they mean, how they can create how we can create teachable moments from them so with that being said i guess this is our first one so not specifically um addressing her contract situation because i'm not sure exactly what else it entails as to why they are now holding up the music besides what she has said um in relation to her asking to renegotiate everything else online is really speculative so not really talking about that per se but more so talking about um the things that she said in the video that i felt like were very valid and some good teachable moments for us to discuss so the first thing that she discussed was um, being young when she signed her agreement, being 20 years old and not really reading the agreement. Um, I think basically like she stressed, that's really no excuse. Being young and not reading the agreement is not an excuse. You have to be able to read your agreement or more so hire somebody to help you read said agreement. So going out here and getting a lawyer, being young, necessarily quote unquote in a sense being broke, is not an excuse. The law is not going to give you an excuse to say, oh, I couldn't afford one, so I just did the best I can. Well, in doing the best you can, this is the agreement that you signed and you agreed to fulfill your obligations under the contract, okay? So, as you all are manifesting these great superstar careers that you all want, all I'm going to express to you all is that in that manifestation, when you become a superstar, you have a lawyer, right? So, on the same sense, it does not matter right now if you have all the money in the world, bet some attorneys and figure out who you can afford to, if at nothing else, be able to sit down with you and explain the terms of the agreement to say, okay, this is what the terms of the agreement say. Whether you're going to sign the agreement or not, this is what it says. If you want negotiations, really sitting down with that attorney and really understanding, okay, what services they can provide and what they can do for you at the time and place of where you are at. Being able to be more disciplined, save some coins, do what you need to do because if it's that important to you, as much as you have invested in your career, shouldn't you also be investing in some type of attorney? Go out here and build relationships with these attorneys. So then when you get in a situation and somebody does offer you a deal, guess what? You've already built a relationship with the attorney. So they know, okay, this is the deal that's coming down the pipeline. You may have, you know, deposited money in a trust of some sort with the attorney. So you have some money to work off of. But you have to get a lawyer and being young and being broke is not an excuse. The court is going to be like, well, then you knew what you were doing. You knew what you were technically getting yourself into, okay? That's the first thing. Second thing is her discussion about making sure you get your own independent lawyer so it is not a lawyer that, let's say, works with your manager or a lawyer that came from the um, label that you are per se signed to. You want to get your own independent lawyer that you did your own due diligence and went out here and obtained. Why is that? Because then they don't have a horse in the race or they don't have any interest in the deal outside of making sure that your interest is protected, right? Because essentially, Essentially, she, what she's alluding to is somebody that you've been recommended to that may be friends with somebody else on the other side of the table. So, in a sense, feeling like, well, maybe their interest is to make sure the deal closes. So, they're just telling me what I need to hear in order to sign. Versus you going out here, finding your own lawyer. That lawyer won't care what everybody else is saying. All their job is to do is to make sure that you understand the terms of the agreement and that... Um, the agreement is in your best interest, okay? So getting your own lawyer that is not um, associated with the circle that is around you as you are getting ready to sign this deal is most beneficial because then at least you will feel comfortable knowing that they have your best interest at heart and they're not doing something that's self-serving to somebody else that's also a part of the agreement, okay? Next thing, when she talks about this renegotiating, does she have a right to renegotiate? Um, yes, she does. Or let me not say yes. A right can be very liberal. So when we talk about the ability to renegotiate her agreement, can she ask to renegotiate it now that she says, you know, I understand more. I didn't know that's what it said. She can. But when you start throwing the word renegotiation out there, it 
people get defensive because now it's like, well, you signed the agreement. It was fine then. What's the difference? Because nothing has changed. So when you start talking about renegotiation, people get defensive. So you want to get it right the first time. And now as we talk about, does she have a right to renegotiate? She can ask and would it behoove them to open up the lines of communication to renegotiate? Yes, because she's in a personal service contract and nobody wants to do business with somebody who is disgruntled about whatever may be going on on the back side of things. So, yes, I think the conversation should be had about renegotiations. But once again, now we enter into this conversation and I'm sure the point she wants to renegotiate, they may not want to renegotiate. So then you end up in a deadlock situation. So it just opens the door for a multitude of issues as it relates to, okay, we want to renegotiate, but if I don't want to renegotiate what you want to renegotiate, then how is this helpful at any, you know, at any point in the conversation? So getting it right the first time, like I said, is very important, or at least getting close to right so that once you all start moving through the agreement, everything is fine. Everybody is happy versus now you have to deliver two more albums and you're upset about the terms of the agreement. Now, no music is coming out. We're going through all these legal issues. Fans are upset because they don't have music and they don't really understand what is going on. So don't make it an issue where you have to renegotiate. Try to get it right or as right as possible the first time. How do you do that? Getting your own lawyer, hiring a lawyer, and getting somebody to sit down with you and read the agreement. Like I said, it's not about you having to understand it in its totality or somebody saying don't sign it at all. You at least need to have an understanding of what you're signing. Then we can get into, okay, well, now that I understand what I'm signing, I don't want to sign that because of whatever the terms may be. Let's go back in and renegotiate. But that's a conversation you um, want to be able to have with a lawyer that does entertainment law that can walk you through those steps, okay? Like anything else, I'll be interested to see. Okay, so the last thing that she said that I felt like was interesting was the whole we are family, y'all. We are family to the extent that we do a lot of business together, we work together, and after a while you build relationships with people and you start to care, by nature, you start to care about people, right? But at the core of what this is, we are family, but this is a business. You run your own business, you are your own entrepreneur, you are responsible for your own self. And in that, you have to handle your own business because nobody else is going to handle it for you. And in that same sense, you can't expect them to watch out for you and them at the same time when it comes to your own financial interest. Everybody is going to watch out for their own personal financial interest because guess what? That's just business one-on-one. -on -one. I'm going to make sure that my coins are secure before yours are. I'm going to make sure that I get what I feel like I deserve before I make sure you get what you feel like you deserve. We are family in the camaraderie sense of, like I say, we do a whole lot of business together. But when it comes to the business, you have to make sure that in the back of your mind, you are always looking out for yourself as it relates to your business. It's not malicious. It's not mean. It's not any of that. It is pleasant, but it's having that pleasant conversation to make sure your business is taken care of at the onset with your family. Because like anything else, real blood families go to war over money all the time. And now we're talking about people who are not technically our blood family, but we call them our family in passing because key, 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 we have a good time. Well, guess what? If your real family can go to war with you over some money, these folk who ain't really your family can go to war with you all day over these coins, okay? So take that out of the scenario and take care of yourself and making sure that your interest is taken care of. And then we can be family because, right, family runs and functions as happy as can be when money is not involved. So take that out of the equation make sure you all have that conversation up the front so then you don't have to deal with it on the back end and you have people who are upset because you feel like well i thought you were looking out for me yeah they are looking out for you but they're also looking out for themselves and so everybody has to be aware of that simple fact okay so like i said to recap if you want to renegotiate your deal it's an option but it can always end up in a deadlock situation if we don't want to renegotiate at the same time get your own lawyer read your own agreement if it's just basic for understanding save people save your coins so you can afford the lawyer because not being able to afford the lawyer is not going to be an excuse 
And lastly, just because we are family does not, once again, give you an excuse not to do your due diligence to go out here and get your own attorney and make sure you understand the agreement for yourself. Okay. So that will be interesting to see how um, the rest of this whole thing plays out. If Meg's music finally comes out and we're able to listen to it or all that great stuff. But if anything else happens and y'all get any other videos, feel free to tag me and we will do another video. Y'all have a great day.